Um, good game tonight. Um, Avila is a good team. They're playing well. They're really scrappy and really fight you. I was really impressed uh, watching film on them. And, you know, we had one day of prep. We were off Sunday, one day of prep. And um, uh, obviously got off to a really slow start uh, with six turnovers in the first seven minutes. And then uh, we were not good at the free throw line. And to me, those two things are mental toughness, right? How prepared are you re to be ready to play? And I knew the nice thing about this game, once we started watching them play, is I knew they would expose in a hurry who was ready to play and who was not ready to play. It's because they make you play all the time. There's no free possessions. They pick up 94 feet. They're constantly putting pressure on you. And uh, you have to be ready to compete. And we were really slow out of the gate as a team the first uh, eight to 10 minutes. And then we were able to get a bunch of stops in a row. We knew we would be able to get out and transition on these guys because they do pick up all the time. So they're not sending one or two guys back. And, but we couldn't get any stops early on, you know. But once we started getting stops, we really pushed it well. And obviously Casey had his run of, what, four threes in a row. And I believe all of those are in transition. And that's a great shot for Casey. He's really, really good at it. Our guys know that. They look for him. I thought um, Larson uh, is the one really got us going, pushed the ball, uh, got some easy baskets for us. I was surprised he was only marked down for two assists. But, you know, he had another really good game, um, 12 points, seven rebounds, you know, two assists, doesn't miss a free throw, and guards their best player. And, um, and we can go right down the line. I thought Burnett was fantastic. 11 boards, 10 points, misses one shot. It was probably the easiest shot he had on the night. Uh, but he did miss four free throws. Um, um, and then some other good you know, guys got going. I thought Sekou Harris had a, had a really good game. Nine assists, seven rebounds. I mean, the guy's 5'9", 145 pounds, and he has nine rebounds. And, uh, but he does have a nose for the ball, and he really sparked us. I thought he got us going um, that way. Uh, so we ever have a good finish to the first half and then was happy with how we came out of halftime and just kind of, you know, put it to them that way. And our big emphasis all week is just like, well, all year and this week is let's play our best basketball at the end of the year. And we had been in a little bit of a funk. I uh, had a great weekend, obviously, against Omaha. I thought we got better last week in practice. We had two excellent practices. Obviously, it showed on the floor with those two victories. And now this week, we got to make that next step. And this was, you know, the first part of it, um, um, taking care of business at home and hopefully gain some momentum of playing well in the Dome. Obviously, rebounding was going to be an <coughs> emphasis against that team. But even going back to Oral Roberts, just taking a peek at the stats, it seems like that's kind of kicked in the last couple of games. Already. It's been a huge point of emphasis in practice. Um, we have to make hits. We're not the biggest team in the world. Uh, we're not the most athletic team in the world. We have some guys that do have some uh, have a nose for the ball. Burnett has a great nose for the ball, and usually, I mean, 16 rebounds against Oral Roberts, you know, and has what 11 tonight in 19 minutes. And Tyler, we know, I mean, it's, I, I think he's still the leading rebounder in the league, uh, and so, um, but that's a huge emphasis for us is making hits, finding bodies. We have to be a. The numbers show we're a good defensive rebounding team, but part of that is. Uh, we haven't been the greatest defensive team in terms of field goal percentage defense. So it looks like we're not giving up a ton of offensive boards, but the percentages show that we are. And so that's been a major, major point of emphasis. When you schedule a game like this, you look at schedule and see when the conference games are and think, where can we fit in uh, somebody else? Yeah, it was twofold. Um, one, you know, in Division One, you get one MTE tournament. It's an exempt tournament, right? And so those tournaments could be two games, three games, or four games. Well, for us this year, it was four games. It was Stanford, Sam Houston, um, Wofford, and Fairfield. So I counted as four. So, you know, I, especially being a first-year head coach at South Dakota with all these new, I want we wanted to get as many games in as we could, and. I'm not a huge fan of playing non-conference games during league play. I just, I'm not a big fan of it. But just the way our bye week worked out, A, coming after three row games, you're a new team, new coach, you know, I don't know. You might be 0-3 after those three games, and you feel like you just got to try to 
get another game and maybe get some traction and gain momentum. The other thing with that is because this buy is so late, we really didn't want to have play on Saturday, have a full week off, play on Saturday, have two more games, and then have another full week off. Going So now you have two full weeks off with one week of two games. i just not a big fan of that. So we felt like at the end of the day, let's get a game. And, and we tried, I mean, we made a million calls. You know, it's hard to get a game at this point in time of the year, and it just happened to work out where they were willing to do it. And so we jumped on it. And, and I'm glad we did. What's uh, what's clicked with Trey Burnett the last couple of weeks? Uh, confidence, I think, is first and foremost. Um, and you know, I think he's just starting to figure it out. You know, it takes guys. We've all, you know, it takes junior college kids in particular. I always feel like at least a semester to just kind of figure out his role. And he's never really played the four before, um, which doesn't really matter on offense. Maybe it matters some defensively because you got to defend some bigger guys. He's got to learn different ways to defend screen and roll. Sometimes we switch. Sometimes we soft hedge, hard hedge. Um, and then, you know, the bottom line is, you know, I, in some ways I maybe didn't handle him perfectly in terms of I, I really, Trey is a really, really good person. And we really like Trey. Um, and we always knew he had it in him. But there were some times early in this year, too, where he just would be, Played great for four minutes and was nowhere to be found for the next six. And it was like effort stuff. And it's a different level. You know, I mean, this is mid-major basketball. Like, you take breaks, you're going to get your butt kicked fast, you know. And I think he's figuring that out. And then he's also simplified his game. You know, I think he used to think he had to do all this different stuff. And at the end of the day, just, you know, I, you know it's like we coach. It's KISS mentality, right? K-I-S-S, -S, keep it simple, stupid. And so uh, I think he's really just decided to keep it simple, and his game has just flourished. And we had a heart-to-heart -heart meeting after the Fort Wayne game. And we had an individual meeting, and, then we, and, and I, I wouldn't say I embarrassed him in front of the team, but I mean, I, we kind of went at him in terms of like, he's a pleaser, he wants to do well. But he was always looking over his shoulder, like, and almost playing tentative. Well, what's it getting you? And then getting you anywhere. So that, that method isn't working. So go out and be a, Muhammad Ali, right? And just freaking be on attack and be aggressive. Like, what do you have to lose? Because what you're doing right now isn't working, you know? And for whatever reason, I think after that, it just clicked, you know? And he's played a lot better. And it started with, uh, he had a heck of a game with Oral Roberts at home. That was our next game the next day after that meeting. The problem was he followed out. If he doesn't follow out, we, we win that game because we just couldn't rebound, you know, in the zone. And he's a obviously a very good rebounder so it just takes guys it's just it's a transition and I think now he, he's learning what it takes and it's really helped us needless to say I know you got other things on your mind but could you foresee him being uh, next year maybe uh, 14 points a game type guy uh, we'll see how much time he puts in the gym in the summer <laughs> <laughs> he's a talented kid he's a very very talented guy and he's, uh, we've always said you win with people first. He's a great person. He wants to do well. He really wants to be good. Um, and he's starting, he's starting to figure that out. But we need him to be good next year, no doubt. How about IUPUI? What are some things you're going to have to do that obviously you didn't get done the last time? Um, catch the ball, first of all. <laughs> uh, pass and make a decision, secondly. And play with a winner's mentality. Because we didn't do any of that there. Now, part of that was them. They played great. Um, I'm not sure we as coaches had them as prepared as we need to, needed to with their scheme. Uh, but we didn't do anything right. We, were, we just looked dazed and confused. You know, I, I love the boxers. You know, I love boxing and the whole mentality. And we got punched in the mouth about three different times. And we didn't like the taste of our own blood. And we just kind of, you know, did our own little thing or whatever. And, there were two clunker in, in our eyes. There's two games we just did not play well. And for a lot of reasons. A, the opponent, um, but that was one of them. And uh, we got to do a, they're really long and athletic. And they play 11 different guys. And they, they, they do a really good job of um, not letting teams get in a rhythm. 
So they're gonna sometimes they're gonna pick up full court with the two-two-one press. Sometimes they're gonna go full man. Sometimes they're just gonna sit back. Sometimes they play two-three zone. They do a good job of keeping teams off kilter that way. And um, uh, we just got and then we got to play way better defensively. We're not good defensively against them, in particular the first half. Uh, you mentioned it earlier, but that field goal percentage against is lagging behind a little bit here. Would that be a target here over the home stretch? It's a big key for what we're doing. We, we, uh, we've changed some things here recently defensively that I think has helped. Um, uh, just it's helped us not foul. It's helped us. Our defensive field goal percentage has been better lately. And then the other thing, Mick, and I, I hate saying this because I don't think it should be this way, but sometimes when you're really in a funk offensively, and we were in a funk offensively, it puts so much pressure on you defensively. And after a while sometimes, and you don't make a shot, you you know, over and over and over again, you kind of lose your will. And it shouldn't be like that, because defense is a decision, right? It's a mentality, it's a choice you make. Um, but I think it, let it bothered us for a while. And I think our offense has certainly, by the numbers, has been a lot better recently. And I think it's shown, it's helped us, you know, with a better mentality and maybe not put as much pressure on our defense. Um, that way, so um, yes, rebounding's been big. Shoring up some things and tightening up some things and changing a little bit of some things defensively has been a huge focus um, in the last two and a half weeks or so. Going back to last weekend, you knew you had these four games that you were going to have going into the tournament, four home games. How important was it to enter into this final stage? with the momentum that you 